Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending August the 19th, 2022. Hey, back in the office again, okay? Don't have anything on the walls, the walls are still bare, but uh, back in the office, okay? We're getting a little bit at a time, so feels much more normal. Here's what we had for the catalyst this week. Markets went up, uh, touched a 200 day moving average, probably topped out there, uh, looking for more good news uh, on, on, on great earnings, but strong strong jobs report so unemployment is about uh you know three three and a half percent around two two to three and a half percent so roughly 97 percent full employment that's causing the fed to remain hawkish that's causing them to come out on their notes saying hey look the market may have misread us don't misread us rates will not come back down after uh, they've gone back up they won't come back down that quickly so readjust so let's see what that's done to the market so far let's get into that okay so what we're looking at right now is the s p 500 on a daily basis and so you can see that trend reverse on the s p 500 on august the 16th uh, that's when we pierced that uh uh 200 day and then uh and, and then we've uh you know, that's when trend reversed so trend was down trend is now up and now we're probably going to go down and test the support, not unsurprisingly, okay, not unsurprisingly, despite the Fed news, uh, not unsurprisingly after you test a resistance line, go back down, test support. Support right now, I would I would call right around that 4,000 level uh, on a daily basis, uh, around around uh, 4,100 4, on, a, on a weekly, on the weekly uh, side of this, you're looking at uh, uh, probably the around around 4071 something like that uh again on the uh on the daily right around that uh that uh 4156 so right around there 4156 4170 that would be support uh you know if it goes any bit more than that then uh, then we can see uh how that turns out let's take a quick look at the nasdaq okay same sort of uh, setup different numbers uh, levels obviously for the small and mid cap but same sort of setup uh and then we'll take a look at the dow but uh, uh you can see the nasdaq's already going back down going to try to test support today around 12 700 uh on a, on a daily basis and then um uh, about 12, 12, uh, 12, 300 really right, right about where it's at right now. They're testing support right there on a weekly basis, uh, looking around the 12,100, 115, uh, right, right around in, right around in there, uh, that area, 114. Uh, let's, let's look at the, at the Dow real quick. Okay. So we see that the uh, Dow reverse trend back on March the 5th, I mean, August the 15th. And so uh, it actually stayed on top of its 200 days uh, most of the week. And then uh, today going ahead and, uh, and coming back down. We'll probably come down around and, and I, I wouldn't be uh, unlikely to uh, test support down around 33,160, uh, somewhere in that, in that level, uh, 33,000 uh, at, the, at the bottom of that. And then on a weekly basis, uh, the same, uh, same sort of uh, setup there, you see it around 32,5. Uh, for support, uh, uh, or I mean, I, excuse me, 34, five, uh, the numbers get small right there. Kind of hard to read, but around 30, around 34, five, 34, five, 60, something like that, uh, that we would get. All right. I wanted to finish up this week then discussing, uh, something about the new law, the inflation reduction act and how that's going to impact you and why we, as despite the news that it's only going to, that particular law is only going to impact people $400,000 a year and north, why that was is very likely to impact people, why the current structure, uh, absent change between now and 2026, is very, very likely to impact people in the 12% bracket and the 22% bracket very, very desperately. All right, let's get into that. Okay, if you remember from any of our classes that you've had, for those of you that have not restructured your uh, your portfolios this way, I want to again encourage you to, to take a moment, listen to me, and then contact us after this is over because uh, there is a search, such a thing as provisional income, okay, in terms of Social Security taxation. 
uh, we, we've expanded our, our views on, on this in terms, of, uh, uh, in terms of the impact on lower tax brackets and why it's imperative for you right now to prevent, do what you can to reposition yourself to avoid Social Security taxation later on because it's going to be, going to be really devastating, okay? Again, provisional income means that you're going to pay taxes on your social security benefits and thereby increase your whole entire tax bill, okay? If you're a single person and your your total income is is, is under 25,000, uh, then you don't have to worry about it, okay? Your benefits won't be taxed. If you're married filing jointly and your entire uh, income plus half of your social security uh, income and then tax exempt interest like municipal bonds and those kind of things is less than 32,000, then you don't have to worry about it. Those same caveats, okay, for the single filers under 25,000, it's your total income plus half your social security benefits plus uh, tax exempt income, okay, or any pensions and annuities. That, that applies across the board too. Those are the threshold areas that you have, 25 and 32. Now, when you get to 25,000 to 34,000 for singles and 32,000 to 44,000 for married fallen joint, if that income is uh, is in that threshold range. You're going to pay uh, tax up to 50% on those Social Security benefits, okay? And then for single, over 34,000. For married, fallen joint, over 44,000. And there's a lot of people who, between the two people, their taxable so their Social Security benefits alone are going to be uh, in that range. You're going to pay taxes on up to 85%. Uh, of those social security benefits, but it gets worse. Let me talk a little bit more why. All right, first let's speak to the case for a single individual, okay? With modified adjusted gross income or MAGI, okay? Uh, which, uh, just work with me on that. We don't have enough time to get into the weeds on that, but for, for modified adjusted gross income or MAGI between 12,400, okay? That's a 10 to 12% bracket, all right? And 43,706, that's your 22% bracket, all right? This is this is clearly middle-class uh, singles, okay? Spending at these levels uh, would be around 42.4 to 65.5 a year, somewhere in those ranges, okay? Very much middle-class, okay? For a single person in that situation, okay, their marginal tax rates, when in terms of Social Security taxation, is going to be either 150% of those tax brackets or 185% of those tax brackets. So we're talking about absent change into 2026 when we revert to the other uh, 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 old code, and that means it's going to go even higher, okay? It's even going to be worse. Under the existing structure right now, if you get into a situation where your tax, where your Social Security is taxed, this is the torpedo that is called uh, the, the Social Security tax torpedo, it really, really is devastating because then in order to pay the taxes, really cuts into the lifestyle, you end up spending your, your other assets way prematurely, all right? Now, let's quickly look at the impact on married filing jointly. This is why, folks, you need to get with us and prepare yourself for this coming problem. All right, let's look at the married filing jointly real quick. Okay, for married couples filing jointly then uh, with annual social security benefits of only 20,000, you start hitting that first uh, threshold around $25,000 worth of income, all right? That's not a lot. And then the second threshold kicks in at 34,000. So it's a little bit better for married filing joint than for single, but the this the single it really starts kicking in at around ten thousand dollars of social security benefits and 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 twenty thousand dollars of, of of magi okay so really your ending income is thirty three seven not a lot this is this is strictly middle range and you start getting that multiplier from one hundred and fifty percent to one hundred and eighty five percent of your tax bracket okay it starts tailing off at forty eight seven oh six for singles but that's uh. That's with, uh, you know, it starts hitting you at the first $10,733 of income or thereabouts, okay, adjusted for inflation. Point is, this is hitting disproportionately to singles than it does married, fallen, joint, but it also hits married, fallen, joint because married, fallen, joint goes up 
really the ending income is from 47,000 roughly to around 67,000. A lot of people are falling into those areas. So really what this, what this speaks to, what this begs is to, again, make note of the fact that just because you think you're in one marginal tax bracket, when Social Security starts getting added into, into that and Social Security taxation kicks in, it effectively, the, a margin, it raises your marginal tax rate, all right? So your marginal tax rate is the additional tax on each additional dollar of income above a certain level. These are effectively going up to around 40.7% and for singles at some phases there, at certain levels up to just shy of 50%, okay? It's up around the 49 and change percent, all right? So, of an effective tax rate if you have your social security taxed, okay? So the idea is, don't do that. How do you not do that? You call us and schedule an appointment. This is very complicated stuff. I'm trying to make it simple and, and short for you right here, but it's very, very weedy and it's very, very complex. The idea is, number one, you're going to have to have to have a social security strategy uh, in terms of when you're going to start taking social security. You need to have that in place. And also you need to have your other position in place such that when, God forbid, you start adding into required minimum distributions after age 72 and make the situations work. So you need to have an income strategy that gets you until uh, age 70, okay, and, 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 and a claiming strategy that gets you from age 62 to age 70 that doesn't cr cream you in terms of Social Security taxation. And then on top of that, you've got to figure out a, pl a plan that, that, that takes care of your lifestyle, your spending expenses going forward to last longevity, all right, the full extent of your lifetime. A lot of moving parts in this, folks. You really don't need to be trying to do it by yourself. It's, it's not an ego trip. It's a matter of facing reality and facing where you're at. Let's get together as teamwork. We can make it happen for you. We'll find a way to win. Don't get depressed. Address the situation now while there's time to do something about it. And let's work our way through this. If you're already in that place, let's go ahead and, 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 and see what we can do to make your, your situation better and optimize it and get you out of this mess, all right? There's ways to win. Work with us. We'll find one for you, okay? Until next week, enjoy these last few weeks of summer, and we'll see you then. In the meantime, you stay happy.